Well, Mount Sinai was a very different place in 1984. It was really exciting to move to New York and to be part of something that was such a, an incredible enterprise. It was a very epic moment in my life. It was a time of, of learning and it was a time of change and New York was evolving, I was evolving, the residency was evolving, and anesthesiology was changing dramatically at that time. When I walked into the operating rooms at Mount Sinai Hospital, there was no such thing as a pulse oximeter. And over the course of the two years that I was a resident, anesthesia changed dramatically by the introduction of end tidal carbon dioxide measurement and pulse oximetry, which drastically changed the safety profile of the profession. I've been blessed because even early in my career, the leadership of the institution was willing to invest in equipment that allowed us to computerize the operating rooms in ways that were very much ahead of their time. I hope that being a chairman of a department that was able to advance the science of anesthesiology and to provide safer and safer care was one of my huge achievements and taking the knowledge that I gained in creating advances that were in the interest of patient safety and carry that into a hospital presidency was a natural progression for me. Well, the times really have changed at Mount Sinai. When I arrived, it was largely Caucasian Jewish men and that was the staff and that was the residents and those were the students and we have evolved in a wonderful way. To someone myself who identifies as LGBT, to, for me to have risen to a position of leadership would have been unheard of 20 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago. But Mount Sinai was always willing to look beyond labels and to establish a true meritocracy. Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, you made it 50 years. The next 50 years, we're really going to see some amazing things.